Hey there, today we're going to take a deep dive into SEO header tags. We're going to answer the question, what are they? Why are they important? And how can they improve your overall SEO performance and user experience? I'll also be sharing best practices, so let's get into it. I'm Liz Linder, the SEO director here at the Kickpoint Playbook, and if you want more how-tos or SEO tips, make sure to subscribe to our channel. So, what are header tags? Header tags, also known as heading tags, are HTML code that helps structure your content. They're used to distinguish the headings, your H1, from your subheadings, H2 to H6, on a page from the rest of the content. So headings help both users and search engines understand how the content is organized on a page, and header tags also help with accessibility, so it's important to properly nest headings by their rank or level to better meet web accessibility requirements. A key element about header tags is they follow a proper heading hierarchy, from H1 being the most important to H6 being the least important. Following the traditional H1 to H6 hierarchy is critical because it helps maintain clarity. Your H1 should represent the main topic of a page, and each subsequent heading, so your H2s to H6s, should represent represent subsections within the main topic. Maintaining this heading hierarchy allows both your readers and search engines to follow the logical flow of your content. Proper heading hierarchy also enhances readability. Including heading hierarchy makes it easier for your audience to jump to sections within the content that they care about or to scan your content for a better understanding of what it's about. Heading hierarchy also signals importance. For search engines, the higher the heading level, the more important it is. For example, your H1 should be the primary focus of the page, while your H2s and H3s should break down key points that fall underneath it. Skipping levels or using headings out of order confuses both readers and search engines. So let's go through an example. Bear with me as I am a huge Swifty, but we're going to use a Taylor Swift themed example today. Think of heading hierarchy like Taylor Swift's fourth studio album, Red, Taylor's version, of course. The H1 in this case would be the name of the album red Taylor's version. The H2s would be the songs that fall under this album. The H3s could be the section where it lists the lyrics of each song in this album. And the H4s to 6s could be the additional information about each song's lyrics or who wrote them, for example. So let's go through this example more clearly. So your H1 header tag is red Taylor's version, specifically because we're talking about this album. Some of the songs that fall under this album are All Too Well, Taylor's version, 22, Taylor's version, Nothing New, featuring Phoebe Bridgers, Taylor's version, and Come Back, Be Here, Taylor's version. The name of each of these songs would be H2 header tags because they fall under your album of red Taylor's version, which is your H1 header tag. However, each of these songs have different lyrics. So if we were to talk about or share the lyrics in a piece of content, we would need to nest them under an H3 of lyrics, for example, because these lyrics fall under a specific song, with an H2 header tag that falls under a specific album, like Red, with an H1 header tag. Now, your H3 header tag should always relate directly to the section above them, because they belong in that section, just like these lyrics are from this song from this album. Sometimes there's more information about a song, such as who wrote them or co-wrote them, who might be featured, or who composed it. Information like this would fall under an H4 header tag, because they're specific to the lyrics, the H3, of a specific song, the H2, of a specific album, the H1. So let's say if Taylor Swift had an instrumental version of a song on Red, there would be no need for an H3 of lyrics to fall under that song, because there'd be no way to further segment that song. So here's how it's all mapped out. So your H1 is Red, Taylor's version. Then you follow it with an H2 of All Too Well, Taylor's version, an H3 of lyrics. Then we'd have the lyrics listed under. Then we'll have an H4 of Written By, Taylor Swift, and an H4 of Composers, Taylor Swift and Liz Rose. We'd also have another H2 of 22, Taylor's version, with an H3 of lyrics below, where we then further list the lyrics. We'd then have an H4 of Written by Taylor Swift, and an H4 of Composers, Taylor Swift, Shellback, and Max Martin. Then we'd have another H2 of Nothing New, featuring Phoebe Bridgers, Taylor's version, with an H3 of lyrics, where again, the lyrics would be listed. And then we'd have H4 of Written by Taylor Swift, an H4 of Composers, Taylor Swift, and another H4 of Featured Artists, 
Phoebe Bridgers. And lastly, we have an H2 of Come Back, Be Here, Taylor's version, with an H3 of lyrics, an H4 written by Taylor Swift, and an H4 composers Taylor Swift and Dan Wilson. So we can kind of see how everything is mapped out and laid out, and we understand that it's because the lyrics fall under a song, the song falls under the album. We can kind of see how everything's related, and it falls under its subsequent higher heading hierarchy level. Okay, so now we kind of understand heading hierarchy, but why do header tags even matter for SEO? The answer is user experience. People love organization and they want to be guided. So using proper heading hierarchy helps both users and search engines better understand the overall purpose of the content on your page. By breaking up the text with headers, it makes it easier to scan, read, and understand. And from an accessibility perspective, header tags also help screen readers better navigate. Search engine crawlers also thrive on structure too, so when they better understand your page, it can help them improve your visibility in search results. So you now understand what header tags are, why they're important, and why they matter for SEO. Let's jump into some best practices. Number one, you wanna use only one H1 header tag. This makes it as clear as possible to users and search engines what topic of a page's content is about. Remember, your H1 doesn't have to be the largest header tag on the page. Number two, you wanna follow heading higher. After your H1, you want to break your content into sections with H2s, H3s, and so on. Don't skip heading levels or mix them up. The goal is to keep everything neat, organized, and easy to follow. Number three, don't overthink the header tag number. Don't worry about using multiple H2s or H3s. What really matters is the structure not necessarily the heading tag number, as long as it makes sense based on your content. Number four, you wanna start all content with an outline. This will help you organize your headings by your primary topic and related subtopics. Number five is to perform keyword research. You wanna keep your keyword research close by and perform additional keyword research as needed so that your headings are keyword rich. Number six, you wanna review Google's search engine result pages for high ranking pages on your topic or search query. You wanna make note of how high ranking ranking pages structure their content and what keywords or topics they include in their headings. Following a similar structure can help you rank as well. Number seven is to keep the user journey in mind based on user intent. Consider the user journey based on your page's purpose. What action do you want users to take? What information will help them take that next step? You want to let these insights shape your content to align with user intent. Number eight is be interesting and write for people first. Of course you want your keyword in a heading, but you want to make sure to incorporate in a way that speaks to your audience first. Number nine is to be consistent. Whether you use sentence case or title case, you want to make sure to follow suit across all of your header tags. So I hope you've finally figured out header tags and what heading hierarchy is, why it's important, and why you need to implement it on your site. For more information and SEO tips, subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.